Okay, so if you were to see this on Audacity, let me just bring that up actually right now. Uh, 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 uh. Here we go. So, so for, for instance, let's get into here, right? And we wanna make it as big as possible. So what you see here is this is just um, noise. Nobody's talking. So I want to increase this entire thing by amplify by, I, I usually just guess. If usually when you press this button, it'll make 5.5 .5 is basically going to get you to the top, I believe. So, oh no, I didn't do that. I lied. I just guess. I don't know what 5.5 .5 means, but what you see here is before and after. Look at the noise. Um, it's gotten bigger, right? And you do it again. It's gotten bigger again. So it went from this being tiny like this to big like this. Um, now the noise, right? Just maybe it's like going, duh, and now go. Now it's like da. It's really loud um, and annoying. So you can't do that. You have to get rid of noise in the background in this situation. Now, every situation might be different, but usually in outdoor situations, you can remove the noise um, on Audacity using noise reduction. Oops. Um, but what noise reduction does, sorry, is it takes a pattern, see that, see there's this kind of spectral patterns to this thing, and, and it removes that pattern. So what I try to do is I try to take a pattern that is consistent, because if I were to take this right here, see that, it has this, um, this line, line kind of thing here, that little red part, versus here, where there's no lines, it would look for this thing throughout the entire thing and it will distort it because that's probably maybe something you want to keep. You got to play with it. Maybe you don't want to keep it, but because it's not, um, doesn't look like it's consistently throughout the entire thing, I wouldn't remove it. And sometimes when you're doing noise reduction, you, um, mess it up and it sounds worse. So always uh, go backwards because it's possible that when you're doing this, it sounds worse. Um, so that, this is, again, this is outside, two people talking, um, two microphones, not one, and the levels are not so good. I wanna, I wanna stop there and make sure that this is useful or not useful or if I should keep going with this. Um, comments, questions, thoughts? No? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the silence feature like literally goes silent. So let me see. You guys have to tell me if you can hear this because I don't know if you can hear the actual um, screen or the um, sorry, not presenting. Present a window this one. All right. So question is, can you hear this? And I think some of their descendants still live there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so when you were growing up in Makaha, mm -hmm. apparently the land of thieves, Yes. what were the special vahipana in your life? Can you hear that? I can't. You guys have to talk. Okay. <laughs> I can't see your faces. Um, uh, 
I make this thing move? Anyways, uh, all right. So, oh, thank you. So you can see here on the top is his voice. On the bottom is Kaiyolani's voice. Um, now, right, going back to my class, uh, tips to eliminating recording levels. His levels might be really high and her levels might be low, too low. So I would have increased her levels. And I and this is probably my fourth recording that I did. Like I was still learning. Um, so the reason is because, again, you wanna make sure these things here go away, use the noise. So go back to your question about silence. So right, control L, silence. That made it a straight line. So listen to it. Rob, people who came through Makaha, um, and I think some of their... In theory, it's okay, but when you listen to it, it's weird. Um, sometimes it's just better. Came through Makaha, um, and I think some of their descendants... So with it, it's actually a little bit better than without it, in my opinion. It's up to you, but I would say that usually people leave that stuff in. So like, let's go back to this um, removing the, <clears throat> and I don't, I don't, um, the waveform is one way of seeing it. Spectrograph is, spectrogram is another way to see it. I think there's just, you can see more um, when you go to spectrogram, when you're talking about noise. So I will literally take this and effects, noise reduction, get noise profile, uh, select the whole thing, and then noise reduction, and I don't know, 2783 reduce. That's what I've been doing. I don't know. I think I think that might be just the normal settings. I played with it. In my opinion, it doesn't get any better. So I just leave it there. So see that? You see a lot less noise. Um, you see a lot less color. Um, and so if I go back to waveform, that line has gotten smaller. Then let's go before and after. So this is before waveform, right? It's kind of thicker. And now with it, it's gotten smaller. Now the question is, does it sound better? Always go back to your ears, because it might not sound better. And I, there was a band of thieves that lived there and would rob people who came through Makaha. Um, and I think some of their descendants still live there. What you, and so I think it sounds better. You always should look at like five different spots to make sure that you haven't it does. It still sounds better. Don't just look at one spot. Um, see up here in this leveling thing. Um, this is your noise. Um, well, this is your sound. So even. <coughs> sorry, let me do that again. There was a band of thieves that lived there and would rob people who came through Makaha. Um, so. Right at that point, you have around 48. You still have ambient noise around 48, which is zero. Um, anything below, you know, 40, I would look is is pretty good for the ears. Um, now you can increase this, right? You want to now increase these these pieces. Uh, increase, and now you haven't. Um, you haven't increase the noise as well. So that is one tip to noise reduction. Um, but again, all this, um, I would have taken out the noise and then merged it into a mono track. So this is stereo left and right. <clears throat> I would have mixed it into a mono track after removing the noise and then kind of normalizing everything. So I have software that does that. I don't know how to do this um, on here, 
but my RX-7 will make everything even. <clears throat> and I don't have to do it here. This normalized might do it. Let's try. Nope, it just took the whole thing and made it smaller. So I would have to save as the other, like I said, the other way you can do it is take these, these small ones and increase them um, manually. That's how you'd have to do it. So, and the reason why is because, and this is goes into production, but you want your, you want everything to look like <clears throat> the, the, this right here, this squad cast one. See how it's all one line versus the top one is up and down. Even this one, this um, one in the middle goes up and down a lot. Um, but this one's really consistent. Somehow Squadcast knows how to make the level really good. Uh, uh, um, Nanea, you don't change the levels, do you? Do you increase levels when you record on Squadcast? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> it took some time. <laughs> yeah. Twice. Which is not bad, given your time. Like five dollars is not that bad if you want to save yourself, you know, an hour. So it's up to you. <laughs> um, yeah, I. Uh, I did an interview with NPR, and this is the one that they use. I was like, what do you guys use? Because I was looking for something easier and faster and better and all that stuff. And they're like, oh, check out this Squadcast. I was like, oh my gosh, that thing's amazing. So <laughs> although you have to pay for it, it, it can be worth it. Um, so, okay, so that's the in-person outside. In-person inside, um, I'll let you listen to a Neil original, Coconut Flute original. Okay, so, <clears throat> get rid of this one. Processing speed for this thing is, you have to have a really fast computer and mine really isn't. <clears throat> so this is actually a professional, <laughs> this professional speaker. But see, these levels are pretty consistent, meaning she talks at the same volume the entire time. Um, and you want that. And look at this noise. Beautiful. Look at that. So it's inside. Um, but here you can listen. And, and there's no noise. This is a good example of what you want to have without doing any work. The Coconut Flute from the Kaena Aloha series by Hiohia Publishing. Cut. The Coconut Flute from the Kaena Aloha series by Hiohio Publishing. Kiakoku was the handsome young son of Kioho Lupa Lupa and Kamaaka Mahi'i. However, he was mute and he was therefore unable to talk. He could only cut. She's like, yeah. We're doing Kiakaoku was the handsome young son of Kyoho Lupa Lupa and Kamaka Mahi'ai. However, he was mute and was therefore unable to talk. He could only communicate by pointing with his hands, beckoning with his head, and winking his eyes. So, this is an example of what you want if you're recording in person. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, 
Where is Anil? Okay. Uh, let's listen to it and I'll explain. Who was Lama Sakina's father? And that's your. Yes. That's your well, grandfather. That's also my grandfather. Right, right. right. Um, Aunt Sakina was one of his older daughters. Uh -huh. My mother was his youngest daughter. I see. And um, so we are both the age exactly. And she was one of the founders. So I paused. Yeah, on the no noise right here. See that? And it's around almost 30. Um, but then later on, so he recorded on his phone, no fancy software, no fancy microphone, just his phone. Yeah, I think he has a Samsung. Um, he's in India with his uncle. There's an air conditioner in the background. Um, obvious, it's, it's a really good story, um, but it's really hard to hear, which sucks. So I gave him the microphone and he went back to India and he re-recorded it. But this is what happens if you, if you don't prepare and you think that you can, you know, do it with anything. And you can do it with your phone, but not in a room where it's air conditioned or, you know, there's a loud noise, vibration noise in the background. I think that at this time, there's like people in the background, stuff is rustling. Um, so all that stuff is, is you know, and it's, it's really short this thing. Well, that's Sakina's father. And that's your... Yes. That's your uh, grandfather. That's my grandfather. Right, right. Um, Aunt Sakina was one of his older daughters. Uh -huh. My mother was his youngest daughter. I see. And um, so we are both the age exactly. And, and this is an elder, yeah, so it's like 90 something. But that's what you have to figure out. How do I clean this thing? And I, I was like, I can't clean this. I, You have to go back and redo it. I can't, I can't make it any better. I tried. I probably took four hours to try and remove this stuff um, with the, the thing that I showed you how. Um, Again, this looks for consistent places to take out stuff. It looks for this pattern. And if the pattern isn't enough to take out, um, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna be good enough. Um, so let's see, let's go back to the waveform. There we go, oops. Undo, analyze, effects, reduction. Um, okay. So that made that really small. But does it sound better? He was one of the founders of the Indian National Congress wow. in 1885. Wow. Wow. It does sound better. What is it good enough? That's <laughs> that also what I think is happening is bad microphone technique. I think his, the microphone is really close to his, his mouth. So you hear like this, the air that's coming off of his mouth into the microphone. So you have to find the proper spot to put it, right? And these elders, he doesn't want to hold it. So you have to hold it for him or get a, or get a stand um, and make sure he's comfortable and make sure, you know, he doesn't like then slouch back and now he's further away from the microphone. So uh, that is that example. I can't clean this. Got to redo. Um, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Go back to your PowerPoint. Online with Squadcast. I, and actually, I'm going to let Nanea take, Nanea and uh, Kanoi take over and maybe talk about your guys' experience. Um, maybe we've already done that. Uh, I don't have a... Quique, yeah, Quique. Um, but none of this had to be cleaned, right? You guys didn't, it wasn't noise that you got rid of. You got, you did editing, right? You guys didn't do any uh, cleaning. I haven't cleaned. I'm showing Quique's one, yeah, yeah.
<laughs> so this one came out this past weekend, yeah? This came out this past weekend. Sunday. I didn't take out any noise. All I did was level, um, make it into an MP3 file. That's all I did. Yeah. 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 It was like a um, a baking, uh, Um. So no remove of noise. Lots of um. How many hours did you spend on that? None. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have that kind of patience. I, I used to do that. That was like my first one. I was like, oh, all these ums, I'm taking them out. But really, if you take a step back, So on Audacity, there is this thing where you can take out anything over X amount of time, it'll cut it down to Y. So if it's like a five second like pause and there's nothing there, it'll go in and it'll take your five, it'll look for five seconds or more and truncate it. Here, truncate silence. Ah, oh, shucks. I gotta, I gotta grab it, truncate silence. So there, there you go. So minus 58, right? This whole thing right here. So anything below 58, right? Um, say it's minus 100. Um, below 58 and a duration of 0.1 seconds, it's going to truncate it to 0 0.008 seconds. So if it's like two seconds, right? It'll truncate it to one, one second, whatever you set it to. So every time, so if you, if you do this here, right? See how that, that just like moved it? <clears throat> so it's a really easy way of doing that. Um, in my opinion, sometimes you need to pause. Sometimes it's okay. I don't have time for that. I don't want to have the time for that. I don't have the patience for it. So if you guys want to, you know, do that, it's fine. Um, but I think that there, there's a time versus, um, you know, quality issue. Obviously, the more time you spend on it, the more... Uh, better it's going to get, but there's a cost to that. So that is the silence truncation thing. All right, I'm going to ask you, Kanoi, how was your first time doing it? <laughs> it 
<laughs> so Kainoa, Kainoa just responded with it took him a six hours to do 20-ish minutes of talking yeah it's pretty that's pretty just I so one time it took me like Four, like took me four days and, and you know what happened I threw it away I never used it and it wasn't the ums it was trying to get rid of noise I'm just like forget it like it's not it's not gonna work you can't you can't fix bad <laughs> yeah Bad mic technique. Bad mic technique, guys. Yeah, it's just part of the character of the episode, really. <laughs> That's how I see it. I think it's fine. Yeah, that one comes out this Sunday. Um, yeah. Um, but also, like, Ku'u Aloha said that she listened to one and she's like, it went so fast. I wish people talked slower. So when you take out those pauses, sometimes the thing just goes, did it, did it, did it. Yeah, like it's like a fast chipmunk talking. So that's another thing to be aware of. It's, you know, it's dependent on the type of editor you want to be. And I don't know if there's like one way of doing it. I think it's a lot of preference and how you listen to podcasts. Um, so try to meet whoever you're, who's whoever listening to your podcast, like their typical way of listening. Um, <clears throat> so, okay. So that's cool. You can, I actually did, um, if you could see here, see the noise. I, um, here, I actually did do the noise reduction and it, it took out some of it. Um, has been true. So, hunana niho, to hide the bones or the teeth? Um, the question is, did it get better? Um, has been true. So, hunana niho, to hide the bones or the teeth? You can't really hear this noise. It's really tiny. Um... I again I didn't I didn't remove it so I think it's fine but it's up to you uh, on removing that noise or, or not removing that noise um, all right and then our last example <clears throat> and that again that was I didn't remove the noise the squad cast they're awesome use them <laughs> it is Skype La Kuokoa. let me verify Nanya, this was Skype right with um what is his name? Uh where is his name? Sorry I'm going blank. Keanu Sai, yeah. That was on Skype or was that telephone? Yeah. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna let you guys listen to this. And this was uh, and you were not on Skype. You were because I have two recordings here, a left and a right. So you used your 
microphone, regular microphone, right? Yeah, so you're on the regular microphone, the good microphone, and he's on Skype. Oh, he's on cell phone and then through Skype? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, window. Here we go. Listening now. Really here in the kingdom. Who celebrates it? And like, kind of share about the history of it too. Okay. Um. So, la koko so la koko is independent. So la koko is independent. Well, sorry. Just from the very outset. Um. Skype does this uh, noise removal thingy too. Um, so what I have to do here is I have to split the stereo track. I have to split it into left and right because I have to increase the volume on this one to be somewhat similar to what Nanea is doing. Uh, so I'll split it, I'll increase it. Um, I don't know, maybe seven. And now, let's listen. Okay. Uh, so, la kuokoa. So, la in, in my language is there. Kuokoa is independent. So, la kuokoa is independent state. Yeah. Like, uh, the United States of America's independence day is July 4th. The Hawaiian Kingdom's independence day is November 28th. Okay. What I hear, and you have to, like, get used by listening but what i hear is like this echoey type of sound and i hear like a, a screech i don't know if you guys can hear the screech um the united states of america's independence day is july 4th the can you guys hear the screech <laughs> july 4th it's really it's really small but Go ahead. Can you hear it? Is July 4th. Okay, is July 4th. It's a really like high tone type of sound. Um, okay, so a little bit about audio and frequency. Um, the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch, I guess you could say. Like a deep voice is a lower, it comes around, is in this area. But a high frequency is in this area. So, um, let's look at the actual um, waveform. This one's interesting. And it's not the height of this, it's the how tight the um, sine wave is. It's how tight the wave is. Oh, really? Oh shoot, I didn't press, I didn't press the button. Okay. Uh oh, can't share your screen. Dismiss. Is that now a window? A cool problem. Share. Okay. So, sorry. Again, it's not the height that matters in the frequency, but how. Um, see, this is a little bit tighter than than this, right? The distance between the peaks or the valleys are smaller. Um, so I took quite a long time to edit this one, um, to take out the noise and I couldn't do it here because it's not consistent because Skype will remove the, it says that it's removing noise. Okay. And th again, this is not, there's no noise. See this? There's not really that much noise. Um, that's not really, that, so it does remove noise, but what it does is it distorts the actual signal. 
So I will, what I do is, and I left hers alone. It is one of the one one. So like, you know, like logistics and stuff or what? In my opinion, her song's fine. So I left it alone. I took his. You got it. This is what you have to do this. Um, save just that one. And I'm showing you this because if you really get into it, you should buy this software. Um, there's no other way that I don't know of any other software to that you can use to do this kind of sound um, removal. It, this is specifically for that. So this is, oh, sorry, I probably, you get, I could probably get to the arc seven. Um, present now, present now, window, arc seven, share. Oh, yeah. Can you guys see the isotope? Arc seven, uh, original clip two, wait. Okay, and there's a whole like thing on how to use every single one of these things here. But to go over very quickly, declip means anything that goes above, right? There's something maybe you guys don't know. Um, see this? See how it's a straight line? A regular waveform will be curved like this. So this straight line, that's a clipping. That's a, that's a clip. So what it'll do is it'll take any clip that's um, above minus one, and it'll smooth it out. It'll guess as to what it should look like. Um, you gotta do that, because it sounds really bad if you don't fix that. So that's what clipping is. Clipping, not clicking. Clicking is like literally something will go click, 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 click. And this thing is smart enough to hear it and be able to take it out. Um, I don't, I, you know, truthfully, I only know some of these things, not all of them. I've only gotten good enough to get by. Um, S's, um, again, that's the air that goes into the microphone, hums, and you know what hum is. Closes, I talked about that with a pop filter, the air, again. Reverb, I talked about reverb, rustling. Um, It'll, it'll hear, it'll like analyze the whole thing and, and look for these things and then give you um, suggestions on how to get rid of it. Uh, wind, dialogue contour, dialogue the reverb, dialogue. So these dialogue ones are like, they know that it's basically a podcast or some, you know, some type of narrative and it'll focus on what does, because this is, they also use this software for music, anything with sound, right? So they, if they know it's dialogue, then they know what the waveform should look like. They, so they can kind of formulate the plan um, given what it looks like. Isolate, mouth click spectral. Um, so what I do in this situation, I'm like, I have no idea what to do. There really isn't noise in the background. I will go to repair assistant and I'll say it's a dialogue. It's not music, it's not other. And I will start analysis and I'll start figuring out for me um, what it hears or what it sees. Uh, we run, let it run. And this is a what, like a one minute clip. So I'll, I'll let this for like 20 minutes or more. I'll just let it run because it'll take a while. Uh, but I figured to show you guys this now. Okay, so it says, clipping detected. You saw that right there. No significant clicks detected. No significant hum. Noise detected. Creating suggestion. So again, um, let me make this point. This is a Skype call. Skype does not, uh, Skype will digitize stuff. It's not an MP3. I mean, it's not a waveform. It's not a wave waveform. It's a MP4, MP3. It's a compressed file that's being sent over the airwaves. 
and then truncated and then outputted. And the output is what's been recorded by Nanea. So because of that, you're, you're, it's not gonna be perfect. So what you um, get is not gonna be perfect. Uh, so it won't sound great, but it'll sound maybe better. Uh, one thing that we have in common with the United States of America is that... So that's the original. And so it gives you three options and you can play all three options. So this is D clip. This is, so all three of these, D clips. So all, the, all three of those are obviously in the suggestion. This also does dialogue isolate in A. This one does voice denoise and gain. And this one does spectral denoise. These are pretty typical. Um, so dialogue isolate, um, voice denoise, and spectral denoise. Um, I li listen to them over and over again to see, to see which one is the best. Um, and sometimes you can't tell. One thing that we have in common with the United States of America. Oh, one thing that we have in common. Oh, one thing that we have in common with the United States. Oh, one thing that we have in common with the United States of America. Okay, I don't hear a difference. <laughs> um. So. I will look at another piece. It's probably a, a terrible example, but if I were to listen to this one, I think it's the best. All I have to do is press this button and it fixes it. Fixes it. So I remember that piece that was cut off. See, it fixed the clip right there. Uh, now it's doing the dialogue isolate. See, let's see how it changes this waveform, if any. And look at the colors and the brightness. Actually, EQing on this thing might be something you want to do, but sometimes EQ will change the sound a lot. You have to be careful with EQing. I used to do them to all of them, and I was like, oh, wait, that doesn't sound good anymore. What happened? <clears throat> so I actually... So before, look at the colors. After, before, see that brightness at the top here? <clears throat> and after. So again, if you look on this side, we go straight to spectral. Um, we're looking at 100 hertz, 500 hertz, 10 hertz, 20K hertz. In my opinion, the part that hurts my ears the most is the high parts. So anything in this range that can be decreased, I think sounds better. So before, see that this red thing and then after it got rid of it. So that's really good because um, it should that means it should sound better. I don't know if it does, but we'll play it one more time. Oh, 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 oh. Did you see that? <laughs> These pieces right here? Right there, that. Listen. I don't, maybe that's a pokey frog. I think it's really high. It's around 5K. Your, I think your hearing level is, yeah, I think 20K to 200 or something like that. But I think there's a, um, that's interesting. I'm just wondering if that's what I'm hearing. <clears throat> so anything that you see to see these colors here. In the background. <clears throat> you want to get rid of those colors, <clears throat> but you don't want to change the, <clears throat> the waveform. So this is this is this is noise reduction. 
this is the in general what happens when you have you know equipment that is not going to be what you want um yeah i think maybe if there's questions i you can do that now um or i can move on okay let me see Anybody questions nods no no questions okay all right moving on so rx7 okay oh oh sorry chat chat does the software automatically go through the sound fire file or you have to identify where it is and then fix it individually it does both <clears throat> um you can pick and choose can you guys see what are you guys looking at right now my screen or my rx7 i don't know what's being shared okay so um it'll go through the whole file if you do the re repair assistant or on um, the dialogue re d reverb <clears throat> you can do a preview of it for just a section but when you say render which is do its thing basically <laughs> it um it will do the entire whole you know the whole clip the whole audio file but um spectral denoise and i've played with this or as a spectral repair pattern so this pattern one i think let me verify i can look oh come on i have partial noise surrounding no i think it's pattern attenuate pattern um spectral repair will go and find like pieces right that look like this if that's what i'm highlighting and actually i can use the um zoom no not zoom this one lasso selection tool come on stop it get out i'm just zooming in <laughs> anything that's here and looks like that if i use the lasso oh oops that is not a good circle hold on escape Sorry, let me redo that. So this, it'll look for this and then, and then I'll say render. So it'll take out little pieces like that. But it'll also look for other pieces. If I go like this, right? If I select the whole thing and render. Please make a selection before attempting to process. That's a circle. It'll <clears throat> remove stuff. So you can be selective on patterns or on, <clears throat> well, in general, on patterns and take out little, little tiny pieces that are um, spectral, um, not on the waveform. So the waveform doesn't remove but this isn't removed but the spectral of the I guess the tightness or thickness of the, the waveform is changed given whatever you're trying to remove hope that somewhat makes sense this thing is um is pretty good i think it's the top you know our arc seven is if you have noise you that's and it's mostly for in the field um but yes, you can use it for Skype. I, I just, I'm going to recommend it's worth $5 <laughs> to not use Skype. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. We are. On. Oh, gosh. Moving on. Moving on. Present now. The entire screen. Oops. Shit. Share. Okay. So, isotope, the cost. Oops. I'm pressing the wrong button. Present. Here's the cost. 
Um, I have the advanced, uh, like I showed you this dialogue, do reverb, contour, isolate, that's all that fancy stuff that you, and that costs that much money. <clears throat> Um, I don't, I, I use these things, so I don't know if I would recommend these things. If you are going to do a lot of editing and noise cancellation and stuff like that, then obviously, but also isotopes, I sometimes, like, four times a year, they'll put stuff on 50% off, so you just got to get it and wait and, and buy it at that time if you want to go with the advanced. But again, if you go with squad cast, <laughs> then you don't need to buy this stuff. Um, but if you're going to do in person, you probably need to buy this stuff. Um, yeah. It, I do more than just that on there. I do the loudness thing that I'll show you after this. Um, so I have a screenshot here of how I did the noise reduction on Audacity, um, just as a reminder. This is that Neil one I had earlier. Get noise profile, which means you just you get the, you select the piece that is the least noisiest. Um, and then you select the entire thing and say, okay, and then it'll take out just that piece. Okay, production. So in my opinion, production is, um, you're assuming that you've done the editing, meaning you remove the ums and the unnecessary information, uh, <clears throat> and you've saved it as a WAV file. You've taken out all the noise, either on Arc 7 or on Audacity. <clears throat> and now what you have to do is make everything um, the same peak. So, and then make everything uh, the same peaks and then make it into MP3 format. So audio limiting and normalizing, I will go through. Um, and then I'll show you how I use RX-7 because <clears throat> that's the easiest way to do it for me. Um, I sent out Kanoi I sent you the audition version, so it's it's easy. It's easy on audition too. <clears throat> so loudness. Um, these platforms, right? Which is all the major platforms for podcasts, recommend that your peaks are either minus one to minus two, um, and your loudness uh, is. It's all over the place. I don't know if there's anything consistent. I can tell you that we set ours to minus 3 dB and eight, minus 18 buffs. Um, so the peak, true peak, is the very the very top of anything that is um, that you'll see on the screen. Let me I'll show you a picture. Yeah. So this peak right here, right? If that was minus 3 dB, that would be your true peak. And your loudness is kind of, um, I call it the average of the peaks. Uh, I don't know if that's the right way of looking at it, but that's how I look at it. Um, so you have to give them something like this. And ours, if you listen to ours, ours is pretty consistent because I always set it to this. Um, and what that means is when when these platforms get your file, um, they're going to look for a straight line. See, see that minus three? They're going to look for the straight line, and they're going to say, okay, when you turn when you turn your you know your telephone um, volume up, that minus three is going to be kind of the peak standard that we use on this phone. Um, on, with this app. So all that is within the host software, but in general, if you stay within that level, those levels, then um, what the person is hearing on the other side will be consistent, right? You don't want them 
to increase and decrease their volume just to listen to your podcast. You want to set it at the same. You don't even want to touch your phone when you're listening to a podcast. So something like this on the top here, Anil's one. See, it's like just up and down and up and down versus this one, which is the Squadcast one, Squeak Days one. It's very tight and very straight. Um, and the software does that. The loudness for um, on Audition or on um, um, RX-7 can just like automatically, boom, just set it and let it run and it's done. Um, so units for measuring signal amplitude, you'll see Audacity, <clears throat> it's a percentage of peak. I, th I think this one means like 100% of, um, of, of the peak. So again, I like to stay around 80% when I'm doing it, when I'm just doing the editing and stuff like that. Um, and then I run it through the loudness. And then for Zoom, um, you'll see it in dBs. So on this right here, the dBs is um, decibels. Um, it's just another way of measuring how loud or soft it is. It's just shown in different ways on different software. Um, do not record over peak, do not record a small short signal, do not record different levels. I mean, we've already gone through that. Limiting and normalizing. Oh yeah, so the top graph is original. Um, the middle graph is with limiting. Um, and the bottom one is with normalizing. So limiting, what limiting does is it, it'll wait, is that the right word? It, it will wait, so what the, 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 the difference between the top one and the middle one, right, is that one's bigger than the other one. Um, and it's, and the bottom one, normalizing, is, goes all the way to the top. Limiting, all limiting does is it increases it, but it also doesn't de increase, it's like a um, amplification, but it, what it doesn't do is it doesn't amplify the noise very much. It shouldn't be amplifying the noise. So limiting says, oh, I see you waveform, you're over this threshold, and I'm, I, I can increase you. That's what limiting does. It looks for a certain um, amplitude in the waveform, and it, 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 it chooses to increase that. And then what after, if it's below the threshold, then it doesn't increase that. So that's what limiting is. And normalizing does is it just makes everything the very, very top of it. Um, so that's how you get to loudness. Um, the issue for me on Audacity is I don't know how to use limiting. Uh, so I never try because I don't have to. So if, there, if anybody can figure it out, I know it's not useful, but um, if anybody can figure that out, that'd be, that would be good. But I, I played with this and I cannot figure it out. And I give up. Um, so, but there's normalizing in Audacity is pretty easy with the minus three dB thing. So all the peaks are, peaks out at, at minus three. And, and this is, yeah, normalizing for RX7 is shown as well. Most, most have part normalizing, just the, the limiting is hit or miss on the capabilities. Um, So let me show you loudness in RX-7. It's literally right here. And I take this and right there, and I press render. And then it's done. Oh, goodness. It only did that piece because I was still, um, that is not right. It took that noise and it made it bigger. That is not right. Undo. 
I'm lasso. All right, select the whole thing and render again. This actually takes a really long time sometimes, but good thing this is only a minute long. I see the waveform, how it's like here and there. So I just took the top and it made it smaller. Did it do anything else? Really? That's it? Yep. Okay. So I cut the tops off. I didn't cut it off because it's still round. But what you'll see is it didn't take the stuff after a certain point and it didn't um, make it smaller as well. It didn't take the whole thing and shrink it. It just took the tops and shrank just the tops. So... Anyways, that is what you have to do in order to produce your um, to remove noise and produce your audio file. So after you're done doing your loudness, I go to file, export um, as wave. Okay, and save, and I always have like a, this is my system, but I always save it a special like way. Oh, this is a bad example. But I always, I always save it a special way, and then I go to MP3, constant bit rate, 64, I just keep it there, I don't know. Less bits is better, smaller file, but too many or not too many bits also will decrease the quality of the of sound. So I don't know, I stay at 64 and then I save that and then I'm done. Um, and the file is complete and now you have to upload it to the host, which is next class. All right, I think we can stop there and take any questions if there are any, maybe, maybe where you guys are going next and how we can help you with your next um how do we get you guys going on your own journey to podcasting is kind of what i want to help with a non-profit class <laughs> what's that what is a non-profit class gotta make a non-profit and apply for grants oh what is Oh man, um, make sure, first of all, make sure it doesn't exist. I think if you can combine resources, because if you're starting from scratch, you need a board, you need people to do the work, you need grants, unless you, you know, unless you can do it for, by yourself. Sometimes it's not worth having an actual nonprofit. The reason to go nonprofit is kind of, you gotta make sure that that's aligned. Um, because it takes a lot of effort. Um, but how? It's really easy. You just file the paperwork. <laughs> you pay your taxes, fill out the paperwork. It's, I think it's a 1023. Or I, I don't know the exact numbers. There's tons of websites on um, that. Um, it's a lot easier if you don't, nobody gets paid because then there's less questions to answer. Um, so... What kind of nonprofit are you thinking about? And maybe we can help you with that. And um, kind of the structure, you gotta think about the structure, who's gonna join, you know, your purpose, your vision. We like, we did branding stuff. Um, we, I, the vision of the, our purpose and how we are gonna get there was very, um, in my opinion, clear cut from the beginning. So if you know what that is, um, then I think it's pretty easy to buy in and then get support. So, yeah.
ค่ะพักไว้ไว oh yeah that's true eh yeah. well that was technology based so it depends on what kind of like you know if it's technology based yeah that definitely get the idea started past the idea stage yeah so what I mean can we <laughs> maybe there's specific questions to help with that um, what what um I guess are you looking for a team to help with your your podcast are you looking for maybe narrowing the scope of what you want to do even coming up with the ideas of what do we want to do our next podcast on like that it's it's um you really got to think about like what are you trying to portray what's important um to the brand the mission of what you're doing um Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe we can help you with specific questions. You can do a, a fiscal sponsor. So at first, yeah, we, at first, yeah, definitely, definitely. We we lend out our equipment all the time, but um, our um first two monies that came to us, it was over a hundred thousand dollars. We had fiscal sponsor. We were in a nonprofit. It took about a six months to get. A nonprofit like paperwork done, submitted federal 501c3 letter came in, determination letter. So nobody starts with the nonprofit to get money. I think they first want to make sure they get buy-in on their idea and see if people are going to give them money. Um, yeah, I I just shopped around the idea and I think because we were hoping to be sustainable, meaning. You know, most nonprofits don't make money, but if you think of like Red Cross, there's a ton of money that comes. They have a like huge people get paid. Like not all nonprofits are you put out a ton of work and you don't get paid. So our goal was to be sustainable. Um, so we're always looking for how do we stay sustainable? How do we keep going? Um, so if you have that, uh, an idea of how to do that, I think it's like easier to get buy-in. To say, oh, we're going to give you this money; it's not going to just disappear. So that's, I think, that's also important in when you apply to for grants. They don't want you to just do something and leave. Um, yeah. And I think anything relevant to what you there's there's so many non there's so many people that give out money, but you have to find somebody. They have, you have to find the ones that are relevant to your cause. Like we got this resist grant. I have no idea what resist is, but they do like um, stories. They they put money back into the community that does stories on uh, what is it called? Something justice. Um, stuff that Nanya does, <laughs> basically. Um, so. In a. <laughs> well, the ANA grant is all about like your community and what you're providing back to your community because Native Stories is not right here, right? We're all over the place in every island and every community. Um, that's why I didn't want to apply. So you got to look at like what's applicable to your um, who you are and what you're doing. Yeah. And I think anybody that. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Even Olha is like hard. 
Hey, do event grants, OHA. Um, DHHL is also like, oh, you should apply that. I was like, every time I look over there, it's not there. So I mean, we probably have like a list of 20 grants and have applied to maybe five because Content. And so it's one of the things I like to do is look at companies that I want to be like, maybe not like, but kind of model ourselves after. And when I first started this, I was like, I want to be like TEDx. They're a nonprofit. They have consistent content coming out. They have a mobile app. <clears throat> Their information is useful occasionally. Um, and it's very short and sweet, like these things that you like about somebody, another, you know, company or whatever, you kind of want to set your goals on that and then figure out who you are in, in getting there. You're not going to be the same as them. You should, well, it shouldn't be the same um, because, yeah, because you're doing something different. But I think um, finding companies that are, um, that have, have been sustainable and have uh, been, um, you know, have, have a really good um, team behind them. You can now say, oh, I need those terms and conditions on my website. Like <laughs> literally I've copied their stuff. I'm like, oh, I gotta rewrite this because we, you have all the legal stuff. You have all the financing stuff. You have the grant stuff. It's a lot of work. It's like, don't like, don't think this is easy. <laughs> if you want it to be successful and you get buy-in from a community that it, that they want it, then it helps fuel your drive to go forward. Yeah. Yeah. Questions, questions.
Yeah, just do it. That's a good advice. So what's your idea? What's, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think um, it does take a lot of time, and that's why I, I mean, that's why I have a team. Where I'm like, I cannot, I'm not, I'm not going to do this, and I, I, I do probably this maybe 20 hours a week, and I'm not gonna, and I have a full time job, so I'm not gonna do more. And um, us finding grants helps do that. Um, <laughs> so, I I think that there are people out there. If if you know if you have a vision for the content that you want, you know who you want to interview. I think you could find the people that can help you do that. Uh, Ola, what's the one the 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 Ola something? Shoot, Kamaka Jingao. He has his own podcast. We've been out for a while. His, he didn't know how to pot, um, do the edits and his edit guy like left. Not he didn't leave, but he had, you know, life. And um, he found somebody else, but I haven't, I've heard, I've seen one podcast come out and it's better. But the thing is, is that if you don't know how to do it in a way where it goes from record to done, that it takes so much more time. And the people that record don't know how long it takes to do the editing. And then not until you do the entire process do you understand why why the people that do the editing are like, please just do it this way <laughs> so I don't have to spend another half an hour, whatever it is. Um, but again, like you said, it takes time and it takes time to learn it, to get better at it, to make it more efficient. Um, but I don't want to discourage you. I don't want you to not, not do that. But one of my first recordings was my grandfather. And I have like one on, on Facebook. And I still watch it today. I, I went to where he grew up in Maui. And and he talks about him diving for fish and pulling, you know, kalo from his lo'i. And I was there this weekend. And I was like, oh, my God. I asked him a question about, oh, what kind of fish was there in your bay? Honolulu Bay. He's like, all oh, kinds of fish. I was like, what do you mean all kinds of fish? Like at that time, it didn't make sense when he was like, all kinds of fish. But I went there this weekend. I was like, oh my god, there's all kinds of fish here. <laughs> like there's so and 
he passed away two years ago, but like I, I and I did that recording five years, maybe five years ago, and I'm just like, this is like the most cherished thing that I have in my possession because um, I was close to him. But but I encourage everybody to go and record their grandparents in any pupuna that are from places that are no longer the way they look today and you know, don't function the way they function today. Um, because obviously tomorrow it will be different. Yeah, uh, today it's different. And I can to I'll totally help you like with setup and everything. I'll come to your house and I'll help you do everything the most efficient way I know, given the situation. I think there's just so much learning and because because we do stuff inside, outside, two mics, four mics, like I, I have a big like knowledge of what works and what doesn't work. I don't have I'm not a professional. I just learn by doing. So there's that disclaimer, <laughs> but I want people to do recording. So if I can help, I will, I'm, I'm all in and I enjoy it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> I think um, with Squadcast it becomes less technical, but to me that's that's the only method to not to making it non-technical and as easy as possible. Yeah, and if, if, if you think of like real production, usually there's the interviewer, there's the, the engineer, there's the camera person, like we're doing it, one person does everything. So <laughs> we're trying to make this doable, but at the same time, yeah, it's a lot to think about, it is. And I want, just wanted to share, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think content is important. Um, don't let technology hinder you, but also don't make it stressful. <laughs> um, one more thing is I just sent in the link, a, our PDF, and, and there's Kupuna questions in there. There's, I, we added questions in there just to like get your guys's, um, you know, when you start creating questions, you're like, why am I asking this person? The who, what, where, when, hows are usually where to go with that. But um, 
we created questions in this document that I just sent because, yeah, I think it helped you guys. Yeah, so, yeah, it depends. <laughs> yeah, my, that's microphone technique. Um, you need it. So if it's two microphones and you have somebody that's closer mic, and this one will, um, this one right here will be, if your if your recording levels are good, it'll be high enough where it drowns out this one because it's far away and this is a bigger peak. So it doesn't matter at that point. But when you have somebody that holds their mic like this, now the level is smaller and you have more noise that comes into the microphone. So, yeah. I, I, my opinion on the, and this is actually one of the videos I did has our RX7 and our, our, our H4N Pro, which is the recorder and it has two mics that look like this. And if you point it here, um, this person right here, you can, it has better levels. And then what you see on this microphone is the levels are decreased. And so this person on the other side can talk. And it depends on the microphone. There's, um, you know, the, there's different um, patterns, microphone patterns. So I don't like that. I think, I think if you want quality stuff, you have to have the microphone point exactly where you're talking into. And if you want one microphone, like Joe Rogan, I don't think he uses one microphone. I think he has a microphone for each person. Yeah. Um, so you can, I don't recommend it. Is it possible? Yes, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> but yeah, if it's gonna be on person, huh. if it's gonna be in person, you need two microphones. The cheapest way of having two microphones is possibly having two headphone sets right, your headphones into your things, into your audacity and having two recordings. This person recording this two laptops recording at the same time and then combining those together. That's the only way I can think of doing it. 
Um, it sucks because it takes more effort. But yeah, it's only that's why we have the R, the HN4 Pro because we can connect two mics to it. So. Okay. Okay. Is there any more questions? I want to help you guys get the next step. I don't know how to do that. Um, and maybe it's just not the, the corded or non-corded. doesn't matter. These ones are really good. These, they're really expensive. It's the first time I ever had to, I bought them. Because, you know, I listen to podcasts all the time. They're like, uh, you're missing out. You need to get them. So I bought them for me as like a birthday gift because <laughs> I'm really cheap. Um, and I was like, oh, my God, these are amazing. <laughs> so corded or non-corded. Yeah. The best way of testing is to see the, the actual thing and, and see the noise and see the signal to evaluate if it's, if it's good or not. But Nanea probably has more experience on what her guests are using. I'm sure they have a bigger budget than us. <laughs> or or really good friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, or the free version with um, what was it called? I forgot. It was in the first episode. In that episode, first class. Anchor is free. So and that one, Olala Hawaii girl that does podcasts uses that as well because I asked her I was like you can do better <laughs> I was like okay I'm not gonna say anything Yep. Yeah, we uh, we've gotten plenty of no's or silences. We've gotten plenty of silences, but you can't stop. So <laughs> you just gotta be, not be afraid of those no's.
Yeah. And for me, right, you're not doing it because you want to talk story with them. You don't want to be like, you know, BFFs. You're doing it because you want the content and the learning of their experience. So, and if they're not down with that, <laughs> I don't want it. That's not your fault. <laughs> Yeah, but some yeah some people some people don't even know what a podcast is and they agree, right? <laughs> like, can we interview you? They're like, oh, is there a camera? Like, no, it's a podcast. What's a podcast? So, <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I think maybe unless you guys have questions, um, we'll see you guys next week on the. What are we doing next week? There's no homework unless you want to do more editing. I can give you homework. <laughs> um, uh, but next week is platform. So uploading your file the way we do it. Um, and then all the social media stuff that Nanea knows how to do. I'll let Nanea teach. So that's the class next week. If you guys have any specific requests, let me know. Um, yeah. Thank you, though, for attending. All right. All right. <laughs> Take care.